Today I will show you how I made this really cool image using Cinema 4D and Photoshop and also I will show you step by step how I went from this flat image all the way to this really cool final end result. So let's start. Hey guys, it's Neymar and welcome to another really fun Photoshop tutorial. You already know what we will do today, so let's jump straight into the video and let the fun begin. I start everything in Cinema 4D by modeling the interior where the robot will be. I modeled the robot a few months ago for another tutorial. I'm using the Octane as a render engine and I will render out everything uh, as a light passes and then I will combine those light passes in Photoshop, in that way I have much more control over the scene in general, you will see that in a moment. Here I'm playing around with those light passes that I rendered out from Cinema 4D, tweaking the scene a little bit and with this technique I have the full control over the all lights from Cinema 4D. Okay, now that I have this final image after Cinema 4D and some Photoshop tweaking, I really like it, but I want to make it even better. And uh, today I will do that using Boris FX Optics plugin. It's an amazing plugin, I really like it, I'm using it really often. And you already know that if you're following this channel, I have several episodes with uh, Boris FX Optics included. But before I go into plugin, I want to go right click and convert to smart objects so I can apply this as a smart filter. And in that way, I will be able to go back and forth if I need to change something. So I will go to filter Boris FX Optics and I will show you how really easy you can do amazing things there. I already have a full episode dedicated on the interface and all the settings here, so I don't want to waste time uh, do that. If you want, you can check it out on the link right there. This is just showing me how I'm using Boris FX Optics to add some effects here. Okay, so uh, first of all, we have the layers on the left side, it's the same workaround like in Photoshop. So I will go right here on the first layer and I want to add some really cool light rays that are coming from uh, this hole in the ceiling all the way down to the robot. So I need to go to the light tab, obviously, because I want light rays. And there are two different light rays. There are add rays and they're just rays. And if I go with this one, usually I like this one because it's really, really cool. And if I go with this one and move it somewhere where the sun position is and make it even bigger, it is really cool. As you can see, it's giving us ni nice, those nice God rays or light rays. I'll just change the preview to 1K just for a little bit faster uh, work here. But um, they're not presented right here at the uh, top of the screen. So uh, that's because there are no much highlights here. It's basically blowing out, out the highlights and making this race. So for that, I will go back to these address and they're much better. They're working a little bit differently. And uh, as you can see, now I have everything. I will make them bigger, so longer rays practically. And let's see where I will put my light source, like probably somewhere here. Okay, this is really cool, but I don't want it in the whole scene. So uh, on the right side, there are so many presets here and parameters that we, you can tweak. I will tweak this. First of all, this is too bright for me. So I will go here to write uh, three brightness. And instead of two, I will go just with the one. Double uh, the, actually to lower the brightness for basically double the amount. So this is better. 
And also I want to go with the mask. There are amazing ways of how to add masks in Boris FX Optics. One of really great ways is easy masks. I already showed that in that video that I already leave the link. So now I will go with the paint. I will go with my brush and just paint out the things that I want to mask here. Okay, let's make the brush a little bit bigger. And here you have all the options like in Photoshop, you can change the brush size, you can change the hardness of the brush and opacity and so on and so forth. So first I will go like this and just paint, paint it like this. It will hit the half of the robot and maybe a little bit here. So this is it. This is really cool, but I don't want um, so opaque here. So I want a little bit more transparent. And for that, I will create another layer mask and go again with the paint. And this time I will put this into subtract mode. And we'll go with a little bit more transparent brush, the opacity around 34% doesn't matter, a little bit bigger brush and just erase this. Okay, let's see, well, let's do it one more time. And maybe here, this lower part will be less opaque. And maybe here too. Let's see, this is pretty decent. I just want to remove it from here a little bit, a little bit more and a little bit more from here. So let's see before and after this, we can go here before and after. We have really cool sun rays, light rays. I really like it. I can always, if this is not too bright for me, I can always go back here and boost the brightness and make them much brighter like you can see right there. But um, I don't want that. So for me, one is pretty, Sweet, a good sweet spot here. I can always, always change things here, but I will leave it like that. Okay, now the next thing what I like to do is to add some really cool lens flares. And again, I will create a new layer to do that and go here to lens flares. And lens flares here in optics are amazing because you can tweak them in uh, real time. And there are so many, as you can see here, so many different lens flares, amazing lens flares. And the beauty of using them is that you can create your own and you can tweak every single of these lens flares, however you need, however you want. I already showed that in that video. So check it out if you want to know more in depth how to use it. But here I will just use these JJ Abrams types of lens flares, this anamorphic type, and I will make them smaller, move it here on the light source on the chest of the robot. And let's zoom this a little bit, make it even smaller. Let's see, this looks pretty nice size. Okay, maybe a little bit down here. And uh, I want to move this second part somewhere here. So I like it like that, but this is too bright. So I can always go to parameters and change everything about the lens flares. And I can edit lens flare, add more elements, change the color, change the shape, change whatever. There are a lot of things, but here I want to go to the other and other brightness and go. And uh, instead of one, I will put 0 0.5. So you will see this is much better. And for me, this is really cool. I can add different lens flares on other light sources. If I want, I can add some uh, lens flare at the top maybe to put even more light here, but that's completely optional. You can do whatever you want. I will go with another layer and now I will do some color grading. So for that, we can go to gray tints and there's so many options here. We can go to color and uh, change the color with so many things, but I want to go to film labs and go with the film stocks. I really love how the film stocks works. There's so many different uh, film stocks here, as you can see again. really huge list of film stocks. And uh, I will go with this one. I really like this one, but it's too intense, too dark, too saturated. And I can really easily change that by lowering the opacity of the effect of the layer for maybe 50%. This is much better. But also, if I don't want to lower the opacity of the layer, I can go right here on the parameters and change again so many things here. And I will first go and change this to 50. So the amount of the effect, amazing. Then I can change, maybe this is too dark. I want to brighten up a little bit this part here. Mm, like that. And that's a little bit better. So 
you can tweak this however you want. There are so many other things that you can do here. But for me, this is really, really cool. So let me show you again before and after. Or let's let's go like this. So this is before and after. You can go like this, up and down. Okay, this is really nice. Now let's do a few more things. Let's add another layer. And what I like to do now is I want to go to the image and I can add some details, for example. So there are a lot of presets here how to add different amount of details. As you can see, I'll go with the sharpen one. It's subtle change, but I really like it. And also I will go and add another layer here. And now what I like to do, I like to add those chromatic aberrations that basically camera is making and every photographer like to remove chromatic aberration, but here I want to add it purposely to make to make it even more believable. So like it's not a render, like it's a real thing. And for that, I will go to the lens, chromatic aberration, and now I will zoom this part to see better. So we can choose between red cyan or green magenta or blue yellow type of chromatic aberration. I like red cyan. So for that, I will go with the distortion here and go around 30 or so. Let's see. Yeah, you can see those really cool aberrations around the lights, etc. And that will sell the effect even better. I really love that. Now, the only thing that I'm missing here is that green that I personally love. A lot of people don't like green, like to denoise the photo, but I really love it. So I will use that uh, filmic green, another new layer. And let's go to film labs and go to green. Okay, and here, as you can see, there are so many different ways how to add grain and again change the parameters of every single of presets. But I like this basic monochromatic, maybe this one, or maybe just basic, just a little bit. Yeah. Mm, let's go with basic. So it's just a small amount of grain, but I really like it. And this is it. This is this is what I like uh, from the photo. So we can go now and see before and after. If I want to bring that to Photoshop, I just need to go with this gear icon, press it, and it will combine everything in a single smart uh, filter in Photoshop. You will see in a moment and we're done basically. Okay, so this is it. Let me show you one more time. This is before, this is after. I really love the change before and after. We can add even more maybe vignette if we want or whatever, but I really, really like it. In case I need to change something, in case I don't like something, I can always double click on optics right here and it will bring, ma bring me back to Boris FX optics and I can change every single effect that I made here. Maybe I don't want this kind of film stocks. I can just hide it just a second like this or I can just change it to any other. If I go right here, I can change it to any other. Okay, double click and change it to any other of the grade here, whichever I like and uh, tweak settings and so on and so forth. But because I like this, I will go back to Photoshop and uh, this is it. Okay, so now basically we are done. I can go just with one curves adjustment layer at the top of everything, make everything brighter and invert control or command I, go with the brush. I like this soft brush and make it bigger and just with the white paint here just a little bit brighter like the light source is coming from this direction not light but it's coming from this direction and that's that's it so let's unzoom let's see before and after and before everything and after yeah i really like it so this is this is really really cool Okay, guys, please let me know down there in the comment section what do you think about Boris FX Optics. It's an amazing plugin, and in case you want to get your own copy, you can use my code for a discount. You can get 25% of a discount. Just follow the link down there in the description and use my code that is down there in the description. Really, guys, so that would be it for today. I really hope that you like this episode, that you learned something new. Uh, I know that a bunch of you guys are asking me to make some Cinema 4D tutorials. Again, I will say I'm not on that level, on that skill that I am comfortable to uh, making tutorials, but there are so many great YouTube channels uh, that are uh, actually doing these topics. Blender or Cinema 4D Blender is free software, so if you don't want to pay for a software, you can go to the Blender. It's amazing. I'm using Blender too, but I'm more comfortable with the Cinema 4D. That's why I'm using it more. 
just go and learn something new. The more skills you have, the more fun you will have in this uh, photo manipulation world. You can create basically anything that you can imagine. If you have any kind of questions regarding to this episode, please leave me down there in the comment section below. I would be glad to answer it. And just have fun experiment and see you guys in my next fun episode. Bye bye.